and we're done tonight. Just trying to think of how to, the best way to do this. Um, yeah, when we're done tonight, we'll still need to uh, we'll still need to you know put the hymn books away, put the chairs against the wall, um, and I'll I'll need a, like when we say the closing amen here, I'll need uh, you know five or six helpers, and we will we'll go downstairs, and we'll uh, we've got a bunch of stuff for the props in the entryway, and we'll carry that in, and then all the rest of the young people will try to get started right away. Um, I don't know how lengthy this practice will be, but it is our dress rehearsal. I tried to negotiate, tried, I really tried Sunday night to negotiate in one more extra time. And uh, there was just no time on the calendar for the next few nights. There was this building is and the auditorium is being used steadily. Um, so, um, so again, I've got more uh, invitations over there. And um, remember, the service starts at seven. Is if as many of you as can, theoretically, we can't get in the auditorium till six thirty. Um, so again, if you would pray that that whatever they're doing in the auditorium, if somehow they would finish that up early, that would help us out. Uh, so again, a lot of things to pray about, and the Lord's going to help us. It's going to go well. It was just a blessing to hear the hum of everybody praying. All right, so. Um, turn in your Bibles, first of all, to First Kings 8, First Kings 8. You know, we don't have a lot of time, so I just want to zero in on uh, one, one thing here, which is sort of what we did last week. Um, all right, so again, tonight we're still on that, the, the thought of the, the family and raising children and all that, and uh, some of this, you, you, you folks are already past this stage, um, uh, there are some things that you can help others with, um, but also tonight, especially, um, there's some things that we're going to talk about tonight. They're actually very, very hugely applicable to the Christian life in general, and that really explain a lot of failure and a lot of um, a lot of um, a lot of things about the Christian life that are not productive of a joyful Christian life. You know, the Lord, the fruit of the spirit is. What's the outcome? The fruit is natural. You know, you, you don't, when you have an apple tree, man, I remember my dad planting fruit trees and, and, you know, and we had, we had some already on the property when we bought this particular house. I remember this huge apple tree and, and what a blessing it was. And, um, you know, but I, we never had to stand out under the apple tree and go two, four, six, eight. Pump them out, make them great. We, <laughs> we we never had to do that. We never had to do that. You know what I mean? I mean, fruit barring barring disease is a natural outflow. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to coax it, it just happens. And when somebody's living the Christian life as God intended it, man, there's gonna be ups and downs, there's gonna be bumps in the road, there's gonna be trials of your faith. But still, if you're living it as God intended it, there's some fruit that just, just, it's as natural as breathing that just comes off the tree. And, and what's supposed to come off the tree is, because Christ is in you, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. I mean, I mean, if, if, if it's being lived like God intended it, it just, it's just, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So we're going to talk about a couple of things that, uh, that will uh, affect that. Um, so I want to start off and I'm say this, and I'm really going somewhere, but I, where our time is so limited uh, last week and, and tonight that I, I really had to juggle some thoughts. And um, on one Wednesday coming up, we're, we're really going to zero in on something that is probably very critical to even what I'm going to talk about tonight. So I'm going to sort of say some things tonight and we're going to revisit a couple of them. So 
For those of you with young kids, there is a huge thing that people do that is very, very counterproductive. And that is parents, you, you've got to learn, oh my word, parenting can be so stressful and so hard on your nerves and so hard on other people's nerves. And, um, and you know, some of that, some of that you create. And do you know how you create it? Because <laughs> you're always threatening. Now, Johnny, if you do that again, okay, can I, can I, can I just go, Arr! that's your first mistake. You don't, you don't, you don't do that, but it's, there's something in our nature. We think, oh, Johnny misunderstood. No, Johnny, you know, if, if, if you, if you legitimately think, and, and, you know, you, you, you know, you legitimately think that maybe he misunderstood. Okay, it's worth if it was if it was complicated, you know, okay, okay, maybe maybe double check, make sure he really understood. If you gave him a list of five things, man, I you know, you know, um, yeah, they're gonna forget the last three. Okay, if but if you you tell them to do something, um they're they're not as dumb as you think. Oh, oh, the deer in the headlights like, oh, oh, I was just they're just buffaloing you is what they're doing. Now, Johnny, if you do that again, I'm going to, yeah, you're going to what? Do you, do you know why you have to keep doing that? Because Johnny knows you're not going to do anything. You're training Johnny. You're training Johnny that there will be four threats. And about the time he sees your blood pressure start to rise and your eyeballs start to bulge, then he knows, oh, maybe, maybe I better do something now. Um, and, you know, without realizing it, you're training them. Um, do not threaten them. Now, Johnny, you're you're making me angry. Johnny, if, if I have to stop what I'm doing. Johnny, I mean it. Uh, you know what? Johnny should have known you meant it the first time you said it. And um, in the way that that works is um, you let the hammer fall right after you say it. Johnny, um, don't touch that. Um, it was funny when our kids were small and, and I watched other people do this too. Um, you know, you've got that, you know, um, they, you know, the kids when they're, when they're real small, like they're toddling around and people think, oh, you know, you, you can't really start teaching them until they're three or four or five. Oh my word. You're, you're way late at that point. Now it's not beyond hope. It's not beyond hope, but you, you're going to have some, some work to do. I was in somebody's house and I, it was just a blessing um, because you know how most people are. Most people are, you, they walk into your house and, and little, you know, toddling Tommy is, he wants to touch this piece of ceramic and touch that glass vase. And he's going to shake this counter. And, and, and the mother is frantically chasing him. And no, no, don't do that. Tommy, don't do that. Don't do that. And we, years ago we had a lady, she really got upset with my wife because um, my wife still had all sorts of stuff at child level. And she looked at my wife and you know what? We became, we really did. We became great friends with that family, but she had a very faulty way of thinking, which is very typical. She thought, oh, you know, just, just put everything out of their reach. Well, that's fine till you go to somebody else's house. And you were wrong in your thinking. No, leave it all way down low. It provides a wonderful opportunity. I watched this little kid and he was wired for 400 volts. And, and he's, he's walking around and he's got this wild look in his eye. And um, I wish I had a couple of counters in here, but I don't. And so, so I pretend I'm a toddler and pretend this is, this is the base on the coffee table. And he comes up and he goes, and, and his mom goes, don't touch that. And he reaches his hand and she went, Blam! And I mean, I mean, she didn't do it. Look, look, look. If you're going to do it, do it right. Like, don't go, don't do that, Johnny. You know, Johnny's just going to look at you and he's going to scream and you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to think, oh, he's repentant. No, he's mad. But if you nail him hard enough, he's not mad. Oh. And this little kid, he was a wild man. So, you know, it was 30 seconds later. He was going over to the next Look at that bowl. And mommy goes, Johnny, no. 
And he goes, and she went, Bleh! I'm like, oh, I like this woman. Do you know what that does? You know what that does? And she wasn't mad. She's not in a rage. Her eyes aren't bulging. In fact, in fact, she was smiling. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you had your child trained that when, when they saw you smile, they thought, oh, no. <laughs> because nobody else in the room is going to know what you're up to. You're going, Johnny, don't do that. And Johnny's going, oh. But you know what she wasn't doing? She wasn't threatening. She went, See, she, 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 she understood a very important principle. Your child needs to know that you are going to do something immediately. When they know that, you are well on your way to a peaceful home. And to an obedient child, you are well. You know, no child's perfect. They're going to have their days and their moments. But do not threaten. Now, some of you need to write that in big, bold letters. And you know what? Even as we say it, and you're smiling and you agree with me. You agree with me, but you're going to go home tonight and you're going to threaten Johnny. And you know what? Just ask the Holy Ghost. Say, oh, Lord God, help me, Lord, because because, Lord, I've got a bad habit going here and I need to correct this. And and uh, yeah, don't threaten. Don't threaten. All right. So with that in mind, I want to give you a basic principle here. And um, so here it is. Here it is. Your child should know that when the command is given and understood, make sure Johnny understands, then it must be immediate obedience or immediate chastisement. That child must know it will be one or the other. Okay? And so hand in hand is one more sentence, and this is the most important sentence Outside of don't threaten, this is the most important sentence of this evening. And this is where your Christian life comes in. You ready? What is obedience? Obedience, true obedience is two things. It is prompt and cheerful. If it's not prompt and it's not cheerful, it's not obedience. Oh, yeah, well, Johnny took the trash out, you know, and yeah, it took you, took you 20 minutes and he purposely ripped the bag on the way out the door. And he let the door slam just to let you know he wasn't happy. No, that's not obedience. That's not obedience. And when our Lord looks at you and me, and he gives us a command, and we're gritting our teeth the whole time we're doing it, he doesn't consider that obedience. That might satisfy you, but his standard is way higher than that. Your obedience is not obedience unless it's prompt. And cheerful. You say, what's my goal? Prompt and cheerful. If you'll get a hold of that, that will help you. That'll help your children. That'll help your Christian life. I want to give you a few verses and we'll be done. Ready? Let's look. All right. First Kings 8. First Kings 8. Verse 39, boy, the Lord has a lot to say about this. It's huge. 1 Kings 8, verse 39. Solomon is praying, and he's praying his prayer of dedication at the temple. And he says to the Lord in verse 39, Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. And then he says it again. For thou, even thou only, knowest the heart of all the children of men. Look at 1 Chronicles 29. 1 Chronicles 29. 1 Chronicles 29, verse 17. Boy, look at the words that walk together in this verse. You know, there's words that always walk together. First Chronicles 29, verse 17. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things 
And now I have seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer, he says it again, willingly unto thee. You know what that is? Boy, you got joy in that verse. You got prompt and cheerful. Look at um, chapter 28 of 1 Chronicles. You're right there, just a chapter back. Look at 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. 1 Chronicles 28, 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. Look at 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 19. Second Chronicles 19. <clears throat> In 2 Chronicles 19, in verse 9, Solomon says to the Levites, it says, And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. Look at 2 Chronicles 25. 2 Chronicles 25. Now, here's, here's the other side of it, Okay. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 25, 2 Chronicles 25.2. And he, Amaziah, did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Watch. But not with a perfect heart. You know, some people say, well, you know, um, so, some people really think this, that, that the attitude doesn't matter. But to God, to God, the attitude is huge. Look at Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Attitude. Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. He's just arrogant, he's proud. And before honor is humility. Look at Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Verse 5, Ephesians 6, verse 5. Servants, be obedient, Ephesians 6, 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart as unto Christ, not with eye service. In other words, not just, not just doing what you have to do just because you're afraid he's going to catch you doing something else. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Uh, look at Colossians, just a few pages to the right. Colossians 3. Colossians, you know, this, this thought just shows up over and over and over and over. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verse... Now, again, an almost identical passage, but the wording's a little different. Colossians 3, verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye services, men pleasers, but in singles of heart, fearing God. Now watch. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. He's, he's saying, and whatever you do, and he's not talking about soul winning and reading your Bible and praying. God help us. We, we, I, of course our heart needs to be right there. But he's talking about their service and their work for a master under a system that none of us would embrace or promote or even agree with. And God says, here's what I want you to do. He says, you're in that situation. They're your master. He said, I want you to serve him. And he says in that last verse, 
He said, throw your heart into it. How does God want you to do things? He wants to throw your heart into it. Ecclesiastes. And whatsoever thy hand, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Throw your heart into it. Whatever it is. Last verse, Hebrews 10. Titus, Philemon, Hebrews. Now, here's, here's this thing, you know, um, you know, parents, a lot of what, how you, a lot of how you raise your children is really going to affect their service for the Lord. Um, you know, they, they can get over a bad upbringing and many of you have, many of you did. Um, but, but it creates some real obstacles for them to have to get over and heaven forbid that you, you in a Bible believing church that attend faithfully should allow those same barriers that, you know, your child eventually serves God, which many of them don't in when it's all skewed and messed up. Many of them don't, but let's say they do. Wouldn't it be an awful thing to be at the judgment seat of Christ and go, boy, you're, your kid did good, and you're going, and the Lord goes, and he had to overcome you to do it. Man, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Hebrews 10. We're talking about attitude. True obedience is prompt. It's right away. And it's cheerful. Serve the Lord with Psalm 100. Somebody help me. What's the word? Gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. You know, it's not resignation. It's not even resignation. It's gladness. Like you're just, you're just thrilled. You're just thrilled. You get a chance to live for the Lord. God says, that's God says, I look down. He said, that, that's what I want. He said, I want, I want you to serve me like you're glad to serve me. Look at Hebrews 10, verse 34. Paul writes to the uh, Hebrews there, and he says, For ye had compassion of me in my bonds. Now watch. And took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Well, what's the spoiling? What does that mean? These believers... They suffered loss for serving Jesus Christ. They had, they had literally had things taken away from them. They had had people come in and seize their property and take their stuff and, you know, and steal their money and things you and me have never experienced. Let me give you, that stuff still happens. See, you're just so blessed you don't know that. Um, Brother Clint is here tonight, and I heard his pastor, they've done a lot of, uh, they've done a lot of work with, helping pastors in Ukraine and uh, in Russia. And they've been doing this for years. And uh, one of their um, key guys that they've really, there's two or three pastors that, that they've really worked with a lot. And one of them told the story of going into Russia to make some money. He's like, a, I, I might have the story not exactly right. I think he's a, he was doing like brick laying construction work. So he crosses the border into Russia. He does some work and he comes back to the border and you know what the border the border guards did? They said, well, so what were you in the country for? And they said, oh, we were doing work. And they said, well, how much did you make? <laughs> and um, and, they, and, you, and I know what some of you think, well, I wouldn't have told them. You're nuts. When they're standing, see, it, it's not like over here. When they're standing there with a the machine gun and they can gun you down and there's no, there's no, uh, there's no court of appeal. You know, it really encourages cooperation. And they said, how much did you make? And he said, oh, I made seven. I'm going to make it up. I made $750. And the guard says, what a coincidence. I need $750. He said, give it to me. He'd been away from his home two or three weeks. He had to hand it to the guard. No court of appeal. No complaining. Loss. And you know what this guy did? He just kept loving the Lord, kept serving the Lord. He really believed all things work together for good, but then that loved God, he kept serving the Lord. You know what? That's, that's Hebrews 10.34.
you know, a lot of people does something like that. It, it sours your attitude. You know, it, it, you, you know, you and me have never been through that. Um, I wonder, wonder how long would it take for us to recover from that? Just in our attitude. Just our attitude alone. You know what Paul said? Paul said, you Hebrews, he said, you Hebrew Christians, he said, he said, um, you know, I remember your early days. And he said, you know what was a blessing? It was a blessing to watch that even when they robbed you, you took it joyfully. Man, that's a, that's a level of Christianity that I don't think I know anything about. True obedience is your kids. It's not obedience. It's your job, parents, to teach them to be prompt and cheerful. All right, we're going to pray, and then we'll get moving. Thank you, Lord. Bless your truth. God, help us to embrace this, Lord. Help us in our own lives, even yet to this day. God, that we would be prompt, we'd be quick to obey you, Lord, and we'd be cheerful. We'd serve you with gladness. Lord, we don't want trouble. We don't want to experience what that, that Ukrainian pastor experienced. Lord, we're not asking. We don't want that test. But, Lord, in Jesus' name, in our day-to-day -day life, help us, Lord that we would be prompt and cheerful yes. as you speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Now, Lord, help us with what is in front of us tonight. God, we pray for divine assistance. Oh, God, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Uh, if you could uh, help us with chairs and the song books, and then I'll, I'll need four or five. If I can get four or five of you young guys to help me downstairs real quick here.